everybody and welcome to another video for our geography series where we are talking with current undergraduate student Robert Perry. Robert, welcome. Thanks for having me, Lindsay. Thank you so much for being here. Part of the series is to help our students connect with things that they can do as they think about using geography as their undergraduate experience. And so Robert, I was hoping maybe you could start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself and then also what drew you to geography in the first place? Yeah, sounds good. So I am from Northern Virginia. That's where I was born and raised. Um, I, uh, let's see, I finished high school in 2012. So I've been going to BYU since then, which has been uh, quite an eventful decade for me. Um, but I came to BYU in 2012 with full intention of studying mechanical engineering, actually. Um, so I, I started into that program before I served my mission to England, to the Manchester mission in 2013 to 2015. Got home from that and switched to electrical engineering. I was kind of all over the place. I was like, oh, I, I really want to build things. I really want to do something with engineering. But um, I ended up joining the National Guard, the Utah National Guard in uh, 2017. Uh, partly to help pay for school, partly because I'd always had a desire to serve my country and, and to um, kind of try on the military, so to speak. Um, and it was actually in that process. I, I did about 10 months of initial training. Um, and then immediately once I got home, so I, I graduated from my uh, signals intelligence um, analyst course, which is my job, which is my job for the, for the Army National Guard. And um, Literally the day that I flew home, I had to report for pre-deployment um, mobilization activities because I was, I was notified before coming home that we were, uh, my unit was going to Afghanistan. Um, so that came as, a, as kind of a big shock. Um, definitely not something I'd plan on. I was engaged at the time. We were planning on getting married shortly after I returned from training. And so the deployment kind of threw us for a loop trying to figure out how we were going to work things out, how, you know, kind of what that future together looked like. Um, and just so happened that right before we actually deployed, we were able to get married in Colorado. But um, it, was from, it was from this deployment that um, I kind of uh, was drawn to geography. I've always had kind of a spatial mindset. I've always been really good about like where things are and kind of understanding why things are where they are but it was on deployment when I was overseas that I it kind of grew into my mind more and became more of a passion because I I was introduced to some tools and techniques that the federal government uses um, in various capacities for for national defense that that really piqued my interest and so in learning more about these through my my jobs various jobs on deployment I, uh, I came home from that, came back to BYU and was like, you know what, maybe, maybe geography is a good way to go. Like, I was struggling with engineering. I suck at math. Calculus is not my forte. And uh, decided, hey, I'll give, I'll give geography a try. And so I started getting into some of the classes there. Um, things like intro to natural hazards, kind of some of the intro classes that were really interesting. And I quickly discovered that geography is connected with everything. And once I, once I realized that, I, I settled it right into it and, and knew that no matter what my future goals or, or um, uh, career outcomes looked like, that geography would absolutely help me and be a part of it. That's amazing. I think a lot of people come into the program thinking that it is a certain way and the broadness of it sometimes scares a lot of people. And so I guess my next question for you is what, what do you wish you would have known maybe coming into the degree as you prepared to understand what opportunities were in front of you? I think coming into the degree, I would have liked to have known a little bit more about how geography touches everything else. Because kind of like what you were saying, um, I had this preconceived idea that geography, and that most people have too, that geography is just studying the names of countries and state capitals and, and things like that. And I kind of had a vague idea that it could be used for other things. I'd seen it firsthand um, in the real world, but 
I, I kind of, I wish I would have known exactly like how far reaching it was because, and, 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 I don't, I don't, and I know that's hard when you're like a freshman or you're not sure what you're doing and you're, you're kind of feeling out different majors. It's hard, especially like you said, geography is so broad. Um, but I guess I would have, I wish I would have known um, more about how it could be connected, I guess, specifically to the things that interested me. Like I never knew that geography and engineering were together or, um, you know, geography and national defense or, or anything like that. And, and so just the way that it, it kind of seeps into everything. And I think, I think anyone looking into the major um, would benefit from, from that as well. And how have things become more clear for you? You know, what, what kind of opportunities have you noticed? You, you talk a lot about national defense and I know just because the reason why you're on this interview is because I know what you're going into as soon as you're finished here, but can you maybe expand for students who are looking specifically at either our GIS emphasis or our geospatial intelligence and technology emphases? What things for you kind of started to percolate and know this was what you wanted to do? One of the first things um, that uh, that solidified it for me and that that helped me know that was actually using some of the same software in in a lot of my um, classes with geography, specifically with geospatial intelligence, with um, that emphasis. There's a lot of classes you take that you use a lot of the same computer software um, there in those classes that I did um, in the army and doing things overseas. So that was kind of the first thing is that there is a lot of cohesion there as far as your education here at BYU and what's actually done in the real world. I think it helps that a lot of the, or most all of the faculty um, teaching in the geography department have a lot of real world experience. They understand exactly what, you know, the, the real world applications are for different things. They understand what and kind of a holistic view what that um, uh, field looks like in different applications. Yeah, that's so great. Speaking of our faculty, I was wondering if you could tell us about any advice that you have in taking advantage of mentoring opportunities in the geography department. Because so I think that there's somehow also a disconnect with our students when it comes to how often should I be engaging with my professor and I'm kind of afraid to go and talk with them. So maybe can you talk to, to our students about the advantage of that? There is huge advantages to talking with, with the faculty. And I think having dealt with probably at least half of them, you can talk to any one of them at any time as much as you want, and they will not be bothered by it. They, all they want to do is help us as students to succeed. And it looks different for everyone. Success looks different for everyone, and it depends on, on what you want to go into. And they'll help guide you in that too. They'll help you figure out where your skills are, what your, what your passions are, and, and, um, and help you get there. And from my own experience, they, they have no qualms about spending as much time as you'd like with them. In fact, I think they don't get that as often as they'd like. I think they, they love it when, when we reach out with questions and because that's, that's what you do in the professional work environment as well. You're, you're always talking to peers and mentors and, and, and trying to improve yourself and people that see that are, are going to really respect it and really want to, to help see you succeed. That's so great. Thank you for that advice. So we kind of talked about this two questions ago, but I'm curious, what are your plans after you graduate? And then how has the geography department prepared you for those plans? So my plans for when I graduate, I have a, a job offer with a federal, um, federal government agency. Um, I won't get into the details too much, um, although I, I, I could probably say more, but... Um, um, working, working in national security, um, and the job itself isn't quite as focused on geography as I would have um, um, originally liked or thought. But the fact that geography, like we've talked about, pervades everything. I know that um, the classes and the major here, um, and everything uh, that I've done here at BYU, is really going to help me because now I understand 
how I can integrate more geographic ideas into what I'm going to be doing. Um, essentially, I can say I can say at least this much that I um, I'm going into a kind of database management area with national security, um, and I know that I, I've through a lot of the software classes and kind of applied sciences classes that geography offers, especially with geospatial intelligence, um, that that's going to help me in that position. And that maybe because of that, and the way that um, geography is taught here at BYU, with such, a, with such a, a very experienced faculty in many different areas of life, that that's gonna help me make the most out of this position and bring that geographic perspective in to enhance the position and enhance the organization that I'm going to be part of. Fantastic. I'd like to hit on this question just a little bit more to get some more specifics. I'm curious, I, we do research here in our advising office about careers and why employers hire our graduate students uh, or our graduating seniors. And I'm curious um, about some soft skills that maybe you, you talk a lot about the technical skills, which is great. And I'm assuming you're talking about the remote sensing classes and cartography and, and even maybe some information systems type classes, programming, et cetera. I'm wondering about soft skills and what kind of skills that you gained through geography that enhance, you know, whether or not that's team building or professionalism or cultural diversity that you feel aided in, in the interview process for this new job. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, through my classes and experiences here at BYU, some of the soft skills in particular that um, really stood out to my interviewer, she actually told me this afterwards. We we had a long, a good long conversation about it. And she said that um, the demonstrated teamwork um, from the classes and projects you do at BYU are huge. Like I'm doing three, I think in three of my classes from my final semester here, I'm doing large group projects, one of which involves an international company in Europe that we have to sync with every week or two. And so I, we have to um, get up a little early so that it's the end of their work day and the beginning of ours so we can, we can sync up. And so that kind of teamwork, she said, really stood out to her, as well as um, some critical thinking skills. And a lot of those skills um, have also come about through some cultural diversity as well. That I, I think that's something that isn't touched upon very much. But having that sensitivity to other cultures and other perspectives and viewpoints has really helped me. Having, having lived overseas in, in several capacities, it's been really easy to work with these, these foreign partners on this project I'm working with now in, in central Italy. Um, I've, I've visited Italy. I was there my senior year of high school. I've, I've lived in Europe for a little bit. And, and that, because of um, those experiences and, and these opportunities with BYU, that has allowed me to, to demonstrate that I can work in, in different cultural environments, I can work in a team. I've shown um, through different group projects how to resolve issues within a group um, and having that um, kind of conflict management capability as well has been super, super crucial. Um, a little intellectual humility on top of that, realizing that everyone in the group has something to contribute. Everyone's a genius at something. Um, and not being afraid to ask questions has been big too. Something that I've really learned a lot here at BYU. Like, don't be afraid to ask questions. Someone's going to know the answer. And if they don't, they'll help you the best they can. Um, but that has, has helped me the most in, in securing my future career. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing those things. Uh, the last question I had is more just about general suggestions that you have for students who aren't sure what geography can do for them. So I'd say for, for students who aren't sure what geography can do, those who are still kind of feeling things out, absolutely take Geography 100 at the very least. Um, that class in particular is very key. I th I'm taking it now as a senior in my last semester. I really wish I'd taken it as one of my first classes and maybe I would have avoided some of the, uh, 
the math and engineering classes that I took uh, years ago. Um, so I think I think that's that's something solid for sure because that geography 100 in particular will will help you will help students see exactly how geography can work into the interests that they already have and maybe open their eyes to new ones that they never considered. Um, and I think that that's something great that geography does in, in every way on the technical side with soft skills, with experience, with different cultures or different different workplaces and people is that it'll really open your mind to, to all kinds of possibilities. So that's, that's kind of what I'd say to them. And, you know, don't knock it before you try it. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Thank you. Actually, while you were talking, I thought of one more question, if that's okay, yeah, can I ask no you problem. one more? Absolutely. So, you have had this really vibrant history with experiences, you know, whether or not it was trips overseas, ex, you know, internships, your military experience. Could you maybe talk about the value of experience as a learning mechanism and how that helped prepare you as well? Yeah, for sure. I would say that experience is the greatest learning mechanism available. I really believe in hands-on learning being the best. That's the best way and the most efficient way that I've seen for the majority of people. I would even say everyone, because no matter what you learn from a book or from a lecture or even visually, just by watching someone, it's different when you do it yourself. Um, and the experiences I've had in my life have really prepared me for the opportunities that are now in front of me. And part of that is, is just being prepared when opportunity comes knocking. But part of it is also going after it yourself. I've made a lot of things happen in my life. It's something that my dad taught me from an early age. He had a, a 30 year career with the CIA. He, he did a lot in the intelligence community and, and with um, computer science. And he, he told me that the biggest thing that helped him in his career, especially with experiential learning, was making things happen. So if you wanna learn something, Try the best way to do it is to get hands-on experience. And the best way to make that happen is to, to talk to somebody, trying to arrange some, some way that you can do that. Um, but I, I never would have guessed that this is where I would have ended up. But I, I think that that experiential learning has helped propel me the most into where I am today. And I know it's going to help me in the future. Well, thank you so much for your time, Robert. We're so excited for you and your future, and we wish you the best. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks for having me.